Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Super Deluxe Steak Nachos. That's right, why would anyone make regular nachos when they could be making Super Deluxe Steak Nachos? I know that is a great question. But anyway, with the Super Bowl right around the corner, I thought I'd show you something that's going to be perfect for your game day buffet. I mean, when you serve something like this, no matter how boring the game is, or how lame the halftime show will be, and it's always lame, except when Cher does it, but when you have something like this on a table, no one will care, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with the steak. So what I have here is about a pound and a half piece of flap steak, also known as flap meat. Don't worry, it only sounds inappropriate. And what we want to do is season this on both sides with salt, freshly ground black pepper, and some chipotle. And while this flap steak is my personal favorite choice, something that works just as well and is incredibly similar would be skirt steak, which we have tons of recipes for. So you should be able to get either of those cuts at any butcher, but generally skirt steak's a little easier to find, so that will work. And why we want to do our steak first is because we're going to need to cook this and let it cool completely before we dice it to use on the nachos. So once we have our meat seasoned, we'll head over to the stove, where we're going to cook this in a little bit of vegetable oil over medium-high heat for about, I don't know, maybe six minutes per side until we have about a medium. And I realize we usually shoot for medium-rare or less, but with this particular cut of meat in this particular dish, I think we're going to get a better taste and texture if we go a little further. And I'll touch on this issue in the blog post. But one thing I will mention, when you see them prep this kind of meat at the taqueria, it's actually cut in much thinner slices, and they grill it till it's pretty much cooked through. And yet it's still always incredibly delicious. And by the way, one quick tip here. Please use a thermometer to check the internal temp. I think we want to shoot for about 135-ish. And that's because I find this meat has a very soft feel. So if you're trying to tell by poking it, you can get fooled. But anyway, one way or another, we're going to cook our meat to about medium, at which point we'll remove that to a bowl to rest. And as soon as we do, we're going to turn off the heat and add a splash of water to our pan to deglaze all that amazing goodness off the bottom. Which, as any self-respecting food wisher knows, is called a fond. So I'm going to switch to a wooden spatula to make sure all that comes off the bottom nicely. And then what we'll do is we'll pour that goodness over our meat and let it cool completely before we cut it. All right, I cannot stress this enough. Do not cut that meat hot or warm. It should be room temp or cold, like mine is here. I actually cooked mine in the morning and popped it in the fridge till the afternoon. And then once our meat has been properly cooled, we can go ahead and slice it. So what I like to do is make nice thick slices with the grain, which for a cut like this and skirt steak is very easy to find. And then we'll cut those pieces into two or three thinner strips. And then we'll simply turn that and slice this against the grain into a nice small dice. And because we let our meat cool properly, not only is it easier to cut, but we're not going to lose any of those amazingly flavorful juices. So we'll go ahead and cut up our beef and add it right back into the same bowl it came from. And we'll take a spoon and we'll toss it with all those beautiful pan drippings we recovered by deglazing. And that's it. Our steak has officially been prepped. And at this point, we could use that as is, or we can just wrap that up and pop it in the fridge until needed. And then besides prepping our steak, the other thing we need to do is get together our refried beans, which is going to start with one of two recommended fats which would be lard, which I'm using here, or some rendered bacon fat. So I'm gonna melt a couple tablespoons of fat over medium heat, and then into that we will toss a finely diced onion with the traditional pinch of salt, and cook those stirring for about five or six minutes until they start to soften and sweeten and turn translucent. You know the drill. And once our onions are just about to that point, I like to add a pinch of dry oregano. And by the way, if you have access to espizote, that would be even a better choice. But anyway, I'm going to toss in a little bit of dry oregano, and we'll cook that for a few seconds before adding our drained and rinsed canned pinto beans. And this would be the perfect time to admit we're not making real refried beans here. This is just a quick but still delicious shortcut version, especially made for nachos. So save your cards and letters. I'm sure we'll do the proper version one day. But anyway, we're going to dump in our beans in a splash of water, and we'll stir that together and let it come back to a simmer. And I'd like to let it cook about five minutes or so. And our beans are already cooked, but I like to do that to make sure the onions are nice and soft and sweet. And at that point, we're going to turn our heat down to low and smash these with a potato masher or something similar. And how smooth and creamy you make these is totally up to you. You guys are the gauchos of your nachos, so you're going to have to cowboy up and make the tough call for how much to smash these. Actually, I'm just kidding. It's not a tough call because these are good chunky, smooth, or somewhere in between, which is kind of how I'm doing them. And then once those are mashed to our liking, we will add more liquid to get the appropriate texture. Because keep in mind, these do have to be loose enough to spoon over nachos. So we'll stir in some water until we have something to look sort of like this. 
Oh, and by the way, if you make these ahead, they're going to really tighten up. So don't be surprised if you have to add a little more liquid when you heat these up. But anyway, once we're happy with our viscosity, we need to season these up with some salt. And quite possibly more than you think. Because what will happen is you'll add a spoon, and you'll stir it in, and you'll taste it, and you will be shocked how bland these are. So you'll add more salt, and then it will be better. And not that these need to be exactly bursting with flavor. The beans are kind of a semi-bland glue for the nachos, and they're going to go with lots of other flavorful ingredients. But we do want them properly seasoned with salt. And then once our beans are set, we can finally build our super deluxe nachos. So let's go ahead and toss some corn tortilla chips into a heat-proof pan. And personally, I think two to three chips deep is perfect. And once our pan has been chipped, we'll go ahead and top that with some beans. And how much to use, we're going to leave up to you, as we will with all the elements in this. I'm not going to give you specific exact amounts for nachos, that's crazy. So we're going to spoon over what we would consider enough. And then once we have placed down what we consider the perfect amount of refried beans, we will go ahead and top with a generous handful of our steak. And of course, if you're a vegetarian, you're going to skip this step. And instead, I recommend maybe using some tofurkey or possibly vegan chorizo. Actually, I'm kidding. Don't use either of those. But anyway, we will scatter over our beautiful diced steak, followed by, of course, some grated cheese. And the classic blend would be 50% sharp cheddar and 50% Monterey Jack. Although if you press me, I probably do prefer all cheddar, but I thought I would go classic here. And then once we finish sprinkling over this cheese, we have two options to cook this. We can toss this into a hot oven, about 450 for 10 minutes or so, until the cheese is melted and the edges of our chips start to brown. Or if our beans are still hot and our steak's not too cold, we could have just done this under the broiler for a few minutes. It really doesn't matter as long as your cheese melts and everything gets heated through. And at this point, because we added beans and meat, we've gone from nachos to super nachos, but now we need to go from super nachos to super deluxe nachos, which means adding all the following fixings. So first up for me, I'm gonna scatter over some nice, beautiful ripe avocado that I diced and tossed with a little bit of lemon juice and salt. And as usual, all these finer details will be expanded upon on the blog post. So I'm gonna scatter over some diced avocado, followed by some very finely diced onions. And I'm using white onions, because for whatever reason, those seem to be the ones they always use at the taqueria. They must know something. And then after the onion, we're going to do some diced tomato. And I know I've told you to never serve tomato in the winter. But unless you invited Alice Waters to your party, nobody's going to care. And then to complete what is basically a deconstructed salsa cruda, I'm going to do some finely diced jalapeno pepper. And speaking of salsa, if you want to use that instead, go ahead. I just think for me that's a little too wet. And I prefer to use all those same ingredients in this diced form. And then let's finish this thing off with some sour cream. You can dollop, but I much prefer to squeeze. I just think it's much more visually arresting. And then last but not least, a whole bunch of freshly chopped cilantro. And our super deluxe steak nachos are done. I mean, close your eyes and imagine that is the centerpiece of your snack table. Actually, you know what? Open your eyes and look at it while you imagine that. That right there is going to impress your guests. And that's just the looks. What do you tear into this? Which I'm going to do right now. And of course, like all platters and nachos, you're going to have your two distinct layers. Your top layer, where your chips are loaded with a little bit of everything. And the bottom layer containing the clean chips, with which we used to scoop up all the stuff that fell off the top layer. Which hasn't happened yet. But trust me, it will. And of course, it goes without saying that if you're not into group nacho, you can easily do these as individual portions. As long as your plates are heatproof, you can toss those under the broiler for a couple minutes and enjoy the exact same thing in just a little smaller format. But either way, it doesn't really matter. You're still going to be enjoying one of the most delicious party foods ever invented. Just an amazing amalgamation of tastes and textures, and I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy! Enjoy!